Well, first, um, well, we, we, we are coming from a very strong year where we grow by uh, 6% uh, roughly and 4% organically, um, coupled with very strong operational results. So as we look forward to the next year, we still see a strong momentum in the economy, but we integrate the disruption of the coronavirus that you uh, mentioned in China. And we sized it, our best guess today is around 300 million euro, but our best guess is that we would be able to catch up uh, what's going to be missing in Q1 uh, within the calendar year. Uh, so we see it more as uh, this time disruption, but, but we think we are really able to catch up uh, with what we have in China. Because you know, what we do in China is mostly for the Chinese market, so we are pretty much self-contained. Uh, inside China and our teams are already working hard. Actually, the past two weeks, clearly the priority in China has been given to bring it back China to work, on especially manufacturing, and we see the situation improving slowly but surely over the past two weeks. Jean-Pascal, if I can be very crude in my auditing accounting here as well, you're talking about a mean figure for 2020 of 2% growth, but your through cycle objective, again, I'll take a mean figure, somewhere in the region of 4.5%. How can you get to that mean longer term through cycle figure, given the fact you think potentially only 2% yeah, this year? Yeah, yeah don't, don't, don't forget that the key objectives that we tell here is the one to increase our operating results by more than five to nine uh, to nine percent every year and we do that by an increase of the growth and an increase of the percentage of profitability seven to nine sorry uh, every year and this is exactly what we are targeting once again to do in 2020 we are a little bit more cautious on the growth at the beginning of the year due to the uncertainty generated by by China on the growth, but we are determined to keep growing the profitability of the company from 15.6 at the end of 2019, which is already a 70 bips progress respect to 2018, and to push another round of progress to 16 to 16.3 of profitability in 2020. And with that, we reach the objective to increase our operating result by seven to nine every year. So every year is different on, on let me a little, be a little bit cautious as we start 2020, which has been a bit disturbed by what happened in Asia. Um, Jean-Pascal, can I ask you about margin and, and the ability then to maintain margin through the cycle as, uh, uh, as you were talking about? Um, if you can catch up some of that lost business through the rest of the year is that going to come at higher operational cost as you try and achieve that well when you look at our constant margin improvement over the past years uh, it's been due to many things of course there is a classical work that we do on cost on trimming on on improving the way we work but a large part also has been to develop higher margin business at Schneider, working on the quality of the portfolio. So take last year, we divested 600 million euro of business that was less promising for the future of the company. And we made acquisition, for instance, in software. We saw Aviva progressing on, on ASCO progressing on, on delivering higher margin inside, uh, inside our portfolio. Remind you that we've taken the commitment to divest close to one to 1.5 more billion, uh, uh, one to 1.5 more billion euro of business as we go into the next coming two years to keep trimming on pivoting our portfolio to more software, more services, and more digital. With that, we have a portfolio which is by nature more generative of margin on recurring revenues. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.